Welcome back folks. Today I want to talk a little bit about the alternative cartridges for the AR-15 platform. Here are the ones I primarily want to talk about today. On the left we've got the good old 223 or the 556 by 45. In this video everything I mentioned about 223 will also apply to 556. They're the same thing in the context of this video. The next one is the 22 Nosler. After that is the 224 Valkyrie and the last one is the 6.5 Grendel. Now one note notable exception to this video is 300 Blackout. I love 300 Blackout. I've done lots of videos on 300 Blackout. I've killed whitetail deer with subsonic and supersonic 300 Blackout. I've shot wild hogs with supersonic 300 Blackout. I'm a huge 300 Blackout fan. If you own a suppressor and have any desire to shoot subsonics, then 300 Blackout is an easy choice. Subsonics are a bunch of fun. They're extremely quiet. They cycle the action in the 300 Blackout. It's really, for me, it's what 300 Blackout is all about. And the fact that we could load supersonic rounds with 110, 125 grain bullets in that weight range and turn it into a pretty decent whitetail deer cartridge, that's just a bonus. But 300 Blackout is limited in range. So I'm in Kentucky and rarely take shots at animals over 150 to 200 yards, so it's fine for me. But if you need additional range out of your gun, then 300 Blackout's probably not the right choice. So 300 Blackout's a different animal. It's not really going to be part of the discussion for today's video. Now back to the four we're actually going to talk about in this video. I shoot them all. I've got videos on all of them. And guess what? They all shoot pretty darn well. So today's video is not really about advocating for my favorite. It's more about explaining the reasons why you might choose one over the other. My first general recommendation would be that if you don't already own a 223 AR-15 that shoots really well, you shouldn't be looking at anything else. And if you've got a 223 AR that isn't shooting as good as you'd like it to, all you need to do is put a good barrel in it. That's what I've found. Get yourself a free float hand guard that will allow your barrel to free float and buy a decent barrel. That's the key to accuracy and precision in the AR-15 platform. My personal choice and what I've had success with is White Oak Armament. I shoot one of their SPR barrels that's chambered in 223 Wild. You can get one for $275 and sometimes they run some sales. You can get them even cheaper. Another good option might be Compass Lake Engineering. Both of those companies, they're focused on what it takes to win matches. If the barrel company you're considering is trying to sell you on a lifestyle and you go to the site and it's nothing but like pictures of guys pretending to be Navy SEALs, move on. Find the site where it's all about the matches they've won. And the pictures are of guys in goofy looking shooting jackets trying to shoot tiny groups to win matches. That, so that's my first recommendation. Get, make sure your 223 AR is awesome before you even move on to anything else. But if you've reached that point and you're ready to move on to something different in the AR-15 platform, there's certainly some better performance to be seen. And it all comes down to magazine length. The, the standard magazine length in the AR-15 is 2.0. 2.260 inches. So any cartridge designed for this platform is limited by fitting the bullets it's designed for into that magazine length. So here's a lineup of all four cartridges with bullets that are just about perfect for them. Now on the left, the 223, this is the 77 grain Sierra Match King with a cantalure, which the cantalures are those marks around the bullet, kind of that groove around the bullet where the case mouth often get, gets crimped into. The 77 grainer here in 223, this is the Mark 262 military round. Now 22 nozzle right next to it, it's the same bullet. All of these are seated to an overall length of 2.260. So notice 22 nozzle is very similar to 223, right? It's just a fatter 223. They just tried to increase that case capacity where we can put powder, you know, we can put more powder into that 22 nozzle due to its bigger case. But the case length is reasonably close. The position of the shoulder on the case is reasonably close. It's just kind of a hot rod 223. Now, if we move on to the 224 Valkyrie, this is the 90 grain Sierra Match King. You'll notice that shoulder is much lower than it is with the 22 nozzle or the 223. And the reason that shoulder is pushed back so far is so that this big huge 90 grain bullet will fit in there and still fit in a 2.260 inch overall length. And then on the right is 
6.5 Grendel. This is the 123 grain Sierra Match King. It's a similar sort of design to the 224 Valkyrie, right? The shoulders way back, lots and lots of room for a big long bullet. So while our 22 Nosler is similar to our 223, the Valkyrie and the Grendel are very different designs. They're optimized for these big long bullets. Now the black mark that I made on the bullets is the start of the ogive, right? The bullet has a, a portion that is full diameter, which we call the bearing surface. But then once it starts getting skinnier up towards the top, that's what you call the ogive. So the black mark on these bullets is where the ogive starts, the end of the bearing surface and the beginning of the ogive. Now in this picture with these four cartridges with bullets that are really perfect for them, you'll notice that ogive starts just maybe a hundred thousandths past the neck of the case or the mouth of the case. So if you imagine a chamber that is cut for each of these options, the 223 and the 22 Nosler, they would be pretty close to one another, right? Most bullets that work in 223 should work in 22 Nosler. But if you go over to the 224 Valkyrie, that throat is going to be much shorter because that cartridge and the chambers for that cartridge are optimized for these big long bullets like the 90 grain Sierra Match King. Similar situation in the 6.5 Grendel. So the next picture I wanna show is with the 223, the 22 Nosler, and the 224 Valkyrie, all with the 90 grain Sierra Match King loaded to 2.260. Now this isn't gonna work at all, right? Look at the 223. Our line where the ogive of the bullet starts is halfway down the neck for crying out loud. Same deal with the 20 22 Nosler. So shooting this bullet in those cartridges at magazine length just is not possible at all. Where on the right, the 224 Valkyrie, it's perfect. That's what it's made for. Now this next picture, there's another important part of the bullet. It's the base of the bearing surface, where the boat tail starts. Now here are those same three cartridges with the bullet stretched out to where the base of the bearing surface is at the base of the neck of the cartridge. So you can see a 223 loaded like this is extremely long. That's 2.540 inches, almost 0.2 inches longer than magazine length. Next to it, the 22 Nosler is 2.5 inches, and then the 224 Valkyrie is 2.325 inches. So if we forgot about magazine length for a minute and we could load them whatever length we wanted, like let's say these three overall lengths were practical in our situation, which one of these three do you think would have the best performance? It would be the 22 Nosler. It has the most room for powder. In this situation, the shoulder of the 224 Valkyrie, which is set way back, becomes a problem. It means we have less case capacity. But we've already said this really isn't practical. Now, there are some guns that are chamber for, for this sort of round, like kind of purpose-built barrels that are made for an extremely heavy bullet or a long bullet that have a intentionally long throat. This is the sort of situation that would lead to that. Now let's go back to the 77 grain Sierra Match King. It's pretty much the heaviest bullet that is really meant to be loaded to magazine length in the 223, which means it can also be comfortably loaded to magazine length in the 22 Nosler. Here it is side by side. The left is 22 Nosler and the right is 224 Valkyrie. Now in the Valkyrie, it is way short of magazine length. So you're not taking advantage of your full magazine length here. You have to seat the bullet deeper into the case to get that ogive low enough to fit in the throat, right? Remember the black line still applies. The, the jump from where I put the black line, which is where the ogive starts, to the rifling in the barrel is pretty much a fixed value. So any bullet you put in this 224 Valkyrie case on the right needs to be seated deep enough so that the bullet's not jammed up into the lands. That's why we can't take this 77 grain Sierra Match King and stretch it all the way out to 2.260, it would just jam into the rifling. So with this bullet, the 77 grain Sierra Match King, looking at these two cartridges, which one would give you better performance? We've got a whole lot more case capacity on the left with 22 Nosler. So with the Valkyrie on the right, the further you get away from the heavy bullets that it was really designed for, like the 90 grain Sierra Match King, we found that the 95 grain Sierra Match King shot really great in it. Like as soon as you get away from that, 
that perfect zone for that cartridge and start shooting 77s or even lighter, you're wasting magazine capacity with a cartridge that wasn't designed for those. So what does all of this mean? And to be honest, so we kind of lost track of the 6.5 Brindle because it shoots a completely different set of bullets, right? 6.5 millimeter bullets rather than the 22 caliber of the other three we're talking about. So it was easier to compare the 22 caliber stuff. So that's, yeah, it is what it is. But 6.5 Grendel suffers from some of the same shortcomings that 224 Valkyrie does. The 6.5 Grendel is really optimized for 120 and 123 grain bullets. And when you try and go to lighter stuff, like all the way down to the 85 grain, 6.5 millimeter bullets, right? Kind of the, uh, there's a lot of the lighter varmint rounds. You really, you need to start seating them shorter so they'll fit into the chamber without hitting the rifling. And it becomes just, you know, less optimized. So considering all of this, all that we've talked about here, here are some general guidelines. I've already mentioned that you should have a good shooting 223 before you consider anything else anyway. So if you've got that and maybe you're looking for a little bit better performance, well, if you're going to shoot the exact same bullets, especially if you're shooting light varmint bullets, 40 grain up to 60 grain varmint bullets, 22 nozzler is clearly the superior cartridge design when compared to 224 Valkyrie. You're going to have a whole lot more case capacity for powder with those light bullets. If you want to shoot heavier stuff, the 88s and the 90s and the 95 grainers, well, 224 Valkyrie is the better option. You know, it's still perfectly capable of shooting those lighter bullets like the 77 that we showed, but you just need to understand that, okay, you're leaving the sweet spot for that gun and you're no longer going to be getting, you know, superior performance. So there's a pretty good dividing line, right? There's, there's honestly not a whole lot of overlap between the 22 nozzle and the 224 Valkyrie. If you're going to shoot 77 grains and under, 22 nozzle is the better choice. If you're going to shoot 80 grain and up, then the 224 Valkyrie is the superior choice. Now, the problem with this whole video is that I have major problems with both 224 Valkyrie and 22 Nosler. The brass that's available in 22 Nosler is terrible. And honestly, at this point, I still don't know whether it's just the cartridge design or whether it's actually crappy brass, but it is extremely common to get really, really bad ejector and extractor marks on your 22 Nosler brass. So if you're a reloader, it becomes a huge problem. You can only get one or two firings out of brass before the case head is in such bad shape that you need to throw it away. And our test with 224 Valkyrie, we found that after just one or two firings, the primer pockets get too big to hold the next primer. So both of these cartridges have fatal flaws. If you're not a reloader, then you don't really need to worry about this stuff. But if you're looking forward to reloading for either one of these cartridges, just know that you're going to have some problems. Now on the 22 nozzle side of things, you know, it uses a standard AR-15 bolt that we use in 223. What people have found is that if you use six millimeter Hager brass and the bigger bolt, actually the same bolt that the 224 Valkyrie uses and the 6.8 SPC uses. So if you switch to this six millimeter Hager brass, use the, the bigger bolt face, you get much better case life. So there's kind of a fix when it comes to 22 nozzler. So far with 224 Valkyrie, I don't know of any fix. The primer pocket life just isn't very good. Now the 6.5 Grendel, on the other hand, has been a lot of fun to reload with. We've been reloading for it for several years here on my channel. The performance is good. It can shoot really great groups. The brass life is totally acceptable. We can get a bunch of firings out of some brass. So for me personally, 6.5 Grendel is just a much better cartridge than either the Valkyrie or the Nosler. And the 6.5 Grendel is going to have similar long range capabilities to the 224 Valkyrie. So to distill it all down, stick with 223 until you've got that platform shooting well. If you find the need to upgrade, if you're a varmint hunter and want to shoot 22 caliber bullets between 40 and 60 grains, 22 Nosler is definitely the recommendation. If you're a reloader, you're going to need to get some six millimeter Hager brass. You're going to need to go to a 6.8 SPC bolt or a 224 Valkyrie bolt, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to let you get the most out of that cartridge. If you want to shoot heavier bullets, if you want that long range performance, go 6.5 Grendel. The performance is good. Reloading is easy. There's excellent brass available. There are a million different 6.5 millimeter bullets available. Bullet selection is great. 
So there's a whole lot to love about 6.5 Grendel. And back to when I mentioned 300 Blackout earlier, being a good whitetail deer cartridge, 6.5 Grendel is also a great one. There are some really good hunting bullets available for it. It's going to have a longer effective range than 300 Blackout, and it's just going to be a great option for you. So I think that's where I'll wrap this up, folks. I had initially planned to put this information into my next video on 22 Nozzer. Somebody in a previous video had asked me to show the differences between 22 Nozzer and 224 Valkyrie. And once I started taking pictures and thinking about the subject a little bit, I thought it would be better to just break it out here to a separate video so that people who aren't necessarily interested in reloading might be more likely to watch. So that's where we'll leave it, folks. I'll see you guys next time.